sky Watching stars align Days of making sweet honey Melissa Lemon balm Nights as warm as your breath On my chest so calm Put your credit card in yeah. somewhere in here. You just like over the app. You put just it put the your app. phone on the app, yeah. and you just ride off because I see them just yeah. like left in the middle of everywhere, oh, yeah, anywhere. <laughs> Take care. Let me get around San Jose. Um, they're just like everywhere, just random. Pick it up. Zoom. Well, actually, I use uh, the Google app on the Go app. That's all you gotta do. But I'd actually fall off, possibly. <laughs> This is our anatomage table. This is a virtual dissection table that allows us to explore different layers and systems of the human body. We can, uh, we can take a look at whole systems as you can see. We can also isolate individual bones and organs. We can make virtual incisions to see inside things. Awesome. All I know is what you want to get a closer look at. And I can Let's look at the liver. Ooh, the liver. All right, great choice. So normally the liver is a lot more of kind of like the pinkish color like you're seeing over here, but this liver, as you can see, is a lot more kind of orange. The reason is behind that is similar to the intestines, the discoloration is actually a result. 0.2 millimeter slices, that's about... So as, this is an actual person. That is correct. And the reason for the discoloration? Oh, it was uh, due to uh, the chemotherapy. So this woman actually, her, her cause of death was stomach cancer. So no, mm -hmm. normally the liver is about two to three times the size of the stomach. And here we can see that they are roughly the, hold on, sorry, one moment. Roughly the same size. And so the stomach became engorged because of the cancer. And so in an effort to cure it using chemotherapy, ended up, um, dis wrong way. They ended up discoloring the liver and the parts of, part of the the, uh, the intestines, the small intestine, excuse me. However, functionally looks the same. So here is the liver on the outside. I'll do kind of a, a 
complete 180 here. What Oops. about the kidneys? Oh, I can show you the kidneys momentarily. Here, let me do, let me just reset that there. So the kidneys, what? sorry, we had, a, we had a recent update. Sometimes it's a little glitchy. <laughs> Here you can see the kidneys, and just under the. My apologies, I had the wrong function. That's so fine. So, and just underneath the layer of the kidneys, we see the uh, the, the renal capsule. That's the renal cortex, the mm -hmm. the layer within the kidneys. Mm -hmm. And then below that, we see the renal pyramids, the uh, kind of almost uh, sponge-like structure that filters out the liquids through our body. This area here. Mm-hmm. Now... Discoloration. Do you have an idea? Do, do you oh, want, that's do you the lungs, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here, let me... Let me... Before, before I show you the inside, you have a guess as to why? Smoker. Good guess. However, take a look at this. You'll notice that oh, a lot wow. of it... A lot of that darker colors near the back, while the front is a lot lighter. Mm -hmm. Any... Any guess as to why? Death. Hmm? Death. Again, a good guess. So, the how it, like I said, it was it was produced by taking a real person, mm -hmm. freezing them, and mm -hmm. making them into the slices, mm -hmm. and they had to lay the body down. Mm -hmm. So our our lungs, in addition to having oxygen mm -hmm. and everything, have blood in them. And right. The blood pooled down because she was if she was laying down. Right. right. Yeah. So the blood pooled down. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're seeing, is we're seeing the, the lungs were fine. They, I mean, the, right. there, there is, as you can see, a little bit of discoloration, mm -hmm. the, um, a little bit of the, that kind of the grayish bits, mm -hmm. but not as bad as the male we have. Wow. Uh, wow. By comparison. He looks pretty good. Oh, excuse me, sir. As you can see, comparison. He has a lot more of the necrosis of the tissue. Mm -hmm. You can see literal mm -hmm. physical tumors as we, especially some of them, wow. monumental as we travel through wow. the layers of the skin. Wow. Mm. Okay. Now, in the case, yes. they are also oh, real. Oh yes, yes, and all the, everything you see in these cases is real except for the eyes. Eyes are really hard to blossom. So that's a real person. That is correct. Extremely lifelike, including the fingers. A real person. Once again, we're at the Tech Museum, and it's phenomenal. The advances in science is phenomenal. I know we just got through uh, listening to um, a presentation about artificial intelligence and helping the body and doing surgery and taking care of the elderly. But um, if you guys are for it or not for it, why don't you guys leave a comment if you're for artificial intelligence. Let's take a look at the brain. Sure. Start off by removing the maxilla, the uh, mm -hmm. upper jawbone, and the, mm -hmm. the frontal bone here. And when I do remove those, you're going to see what kind of looks like almost like a, a dark red blobs. Those are the that's the cavity of the of the excuse me, the, uh, the sinuses. So, you can, so that's what you're seeing here is that that kind of that darker red section. That's this that's the cavity of the sinuses, and it stretches all the way up to the top up to the to the. Yeah, one smart farmer said, 2,000 years ago, the there was a boy and a dragon. So come into this town, into the Midway the story. To eat our cattle. So they started giving food to the dragon where it lived in the swamp. So they would take the cow, tie it there, and it would eat, and the dragon would go back to sleep. So they were happy. And they started feeding the cows. Every day, one cow. After a while, they ran out of cows. 
chicken are gone, pigs are gone, cows are gone. And they said, oh, what else do we have? We have our children. Let's feed the dragon our children. So they came up with a system where they would pick names and say, oh, okay, today it's your kid's turn. It's your kid's turn. So they started doing that. And then they ran out of children. And then, but then they knew that the king had a daughter. The daughter, you know, but nobody's talked about that. So they went to the king and said, you know, king, you know, it's, it's your turn now. You have to send your daughter. And so this shepherd boy came to the town and he was watching all this. And the king announced, anybody who kills this dragon, I will give my daughter in marriage and I will give you half of the kingdom. And the shepherd boy said, I'll, I'll do that. And everybody laughed. You know, this kid, he was just a teenager. And so what he did, he took the king's daughter, he tied her there to a tree, and he took a rope and made a noose out of it and was waiting in the bushes. When the dragon came out, he threw the noose around the neck of the dragon, pulled it tight so it cannot open its mouth, it cannot spit fire, and so he dragged the dragon into the village and killed it. He was called St. George and that's what he's doing there. But the story reminds me of how we have fed this dragon, the dragon of healthcare. It's time to slay it. And each of you has a noose, has a rope. It's a very simple thing. It's nothing fancy. Everybody has it. It's just data. How do you use that data to gain knowledge? And how do you use that knowledge to make healthcare better? Hopefully you'll be able to do that. Thank you very much. You can uh, you know, connect with me on LinkedIn or if you need an email, I'll give you my email. Uh, those are some of the issues that you need to pay attention to. How does that affect the physician-patient relationship? You know, there's all these other complexities that are added in between, right? Between a physician and a patient. You know, there's insurance company, there's small practice, there's regulations. So how will your device affect all those areas? That's something to think about. Um, as time goes on, as we gain more knowledge, what will happen is that right now, the, the the model is where you see the sick patients in the hospital, right? And as we gain more knowledge, how can we prevent from people getting into the hospital? So we go into the home. And then what are the things in the home that will keep them healthy? And then you keep going up and up. You know, what are the childhood risks? Or what are the risks during pregnancy when the child is born that will affect the rest of their lives? And so, as we gain more knowledge, we will be going upstream. And how does that affect the downstream costs? Current science says that, okay, if you have a population, you take a, a, a sample from the population, you study that sample and gain some insight, and then you apply that insight. To, are there medicines that will prevent the procedure? Maybe, you know, right now we're looking at appendicitis. It used to be that appendicitis always needed surgery, but maybe not anymore. Maybe we can try some antibiotics that will help patients from having to have surgery. How about diet? Maybe if you change your diet, we don't know what kind of diet. Maybe there's a diet that will help prevent one from getting appendicitis. How about other factors? Where you shop, your social network your family dynamics, you know, what you eat, what's in your refrigerator, all those things affect your health. And AI will be able to provide us with data to change that. So some of the, I just wanted to describe what I do. Um, we look at data and then come up with analytic solutions. You know, what has happened here? So we look at retrospective data. Data that, that you know, last for two, three years. 
for the last two or three years, how have the patients been doing? And then we want to predict. So take today's data and say, in about two years, this person will have a heart attack. Be able to predict that, what will happen. And then, how do you prevent that from happening now? So you go back and see, what are the interventions that have helped others prevent that bad outcome from happening? 